two, three. Test one, two, three. All right. Let me raise this up a little bit. Well, good morning, Mount Pleasant. Well, not morning. What is it? It's afternoon, the evening. All right. So, well, good evening, Mount Pleasant. Uh, welcome to our Moving On Up series. You can just keep that. Um, this is a series that we will be doing um, throughout the course of the year where our goal here is to help you get better at your current job, uh, whether you're on your current job, looking to move up in a new job, uh, changing careers or would just love to make more money. You have to go back to work, even though we may not want to go back to work, but we have to go depending upon the things that we're doing now. So before we get into our um, content for the day, I'm going to have uh, Sister Greer open us up in prayer and then we will start on in our Moving On Up series. So for those of you online, uh, please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for how you have blessed us to come to the house of God. Once again, Lord, we ask that your spirit be here and help us to learn and that I uh, have an open heart to receive what we learn. We thank you for Deacon Williams presenting this session, Lord, and we ask that you be in the midst of it. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Greer. So uh, those of you who are online, I am able to see your comments and things. Brother Calendar in the back will uh, raise his hand and let me know that we have a comment or a question for those of you viewing online. Uh, welcome to our series, uh, Moving On Up, where our title is Taking Your Career to the Next Level. Uh, today we're going to focus on the scary part, the thing that bothers people the most. You get the courage to um, apply for a new job, you see a new job you want, you got your new suit on, you got your hair done, you got your nails done, you're ready to go, you got your nice portfolio, you walk in and it's just those five minutes before you know that you're next that is probably the most nerve-wracking piece that we have. And my goal today is to help you prepare for that interview. So just before you go in, all your nerves are gone. So the thing that alleviates nerves the most, the anxiety, the stress, is preparation. So we're gonna go through today um, how to prepare for your interview. So there are a couple things we're gonna talk about. There's a very specific point of view that you take when you're going through your interview. And when you take this point of view, um, it makes an incredible difference. We'll also talk about the biggest mistake uh, that interviewees make and what you can do about that. So we're gonna talk about that as well too. We'll also go through how to talk about um, how to look at your background, all the things that you've done in your career, whether it's you're fresh out of high school, getting ready to uh, go into a job, 
whether it's uh, I've been on my current job right now, I'm getting ready to take a step up. It could be a lateral move. It could be a move to a different department. We're going to talk about how to go through your background to make sure you're the best possible candidate. Um, that the interviewer, HR, recruiter, or whoever it is that you're in front of, that you're the best person for it. We're also going to talk about the biggest mistake that interviewees make. We're going to talk about ways to prepare and practice uh, for your background as well, too. So if you follow these things that we're going to discuss today, I guarantee you, you'll be the most prepared, most prepared person uh, the recruiter, HR, or the interviewer has ever seen. So, Next slide. All right. So what, what is an interview? An interview is really a sales opportunity. Because people think, well, I'm not in sales. I don't like sales. I don't want to do sales. That's what your interview is. It's an opportunity for you to sell yourself to the person on the other side of the table. Now, before you sell something to somebody, because I've, I've been in sales for over almost 20 years now. So before I go in and just start talking, I got to find out what do they want? That way I'm focused on the right thing to say to make them want to choose me or you want them to choose you. Because if you go in and just start talking, you have no clue what they're looking for. You have absolutely nothing. The other thing is this, how do they think? So while I'm talking, what is going through his head? How is he determining if I go to the next round or if, nah, this isn't going to work out? What are they thinking? So an interview is actually a sales opportunity for you to go through it. Next slide, please. So this is what it looks like. The person you're talking to is actually trying to close his or her eyes and imagine you doing the job. That's exactly what they're trying to do. What happens when we close our eyes? When we close our eyes, we block everything else out. We start to focus a little bit more. Our hearing goes up. Our thoughts clear. Our brain flushes all those distractions out. That's what the interviewee person is actually trying to do. They're trying to close his or her eyes and imagine you doing the job. That's how we know who the right person is. If I close my eyes and I can see Sister Greer in this opportunity doing the role, boom, she's the lady for me. That's essentially what the person on the other side of the table is doing. They want to close their eyes and picture you doing that job. Next slide. So, when I close my eyes, there's a certain list of things that I have in mind that I'm looking for in a candidate. Throughout the interview process, there are things that I'm going to uncover. And you'll see this acronym, STCA. So what I'm looking for, and you have to sell me on, are your skills. So I'm looking for, okay, what can they do? Your traits, is this a natural trait that they, that they can do? They have to work at it. Characteristics, what behaviors have they done previously that tell me they can do this job? And the abilities, do they have the ability to do it? When things get tough, what do they do? When things go out of whack, what do they do? So we're looking for skills, traits, characteristics, and abilities. Those are the four things that we're looking for in a candidate. So how do we come about looking for these skills, traits, characteristics, and abilities? We go through that by asking questions. So as we're asking questions, we're still processing. Is that the right skill based on what he says? Is that the right trait? Does he have the right characteristics? Does he or she have the right abilities? Those are the things that we are looking for. Next slide, please. Okay, so here's a question. What is the biggest mistake you think people make getting ready for an interview? This is probably the, this is, 
It absolutely blow your mind. But it is the biggest mistake that people do when they get ready to interview for another job. Now, being prepared is part of it. What they have on. Those are all good answers. <laughs> Not knowing the questions, absolutely, which is part of preparation. Not knowing much about the business, absolutely. All of those fit into it. But let me tell you the biggest thing that people do that is the biggest mistake is this. Next slide, please. Next one, right here. They spend too much time learning about the company and not about the job. What's the, what, what is the purpose of the interview? It's to get to know you. It's about you. What you know about my company is only a little bit. Because I'm not going to hire you because you know all about my company. I'm going to hire you because I know you can do the job. The biggest mistake that people do in an interview is they spend a lot of time looking at the company, but they never spend enough energy and time looking at the job. That's the thing you're going for. So how do I look at this job? All right, number one, I'm going to talk to people that's currently doing the job. Number two, I'm going to research other companies outside the industry or outside my company that have the similar role. What you want to find out is not how you do the job, but how do you excel in the job? Because every candidate that we get can do the job. But as the person on the other end, I want to find the person who can excel at the job. That's easy for me as, as, as the hiring manager. If you can excel at that job, you're the person I want. So when you're going through your interview preparation, don't spend a lot of time looking at the company. Spend the bulk load of your time learning about the job. What skills are required for that job? What traits, what characteristics, what abilities? Those are the things that you really want to focus on for the job. Some of those could be in the job description. And we'll go through here in a moment of places you can look as well, too. So, but I would start with the job description. Start there. Any questions thus far? Grab your microphone right there. We got some folks online that can't see us. You were going to ask. Um, okay, when you go for the interview, mm -hmm. sometimes you, go, you, you want to interview, but you actually don't really know the position. Mm -hmm. Is that weird? You just want to get in that company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so th there are certain ways that, uh, let's say I want to join this company, but I want to get in in any way possible that I can. So the job I want may not be available, but I want to work for that company. So what you do is you go on the website or wherever you find it, look at your resume, find the job that matches your skills, your traits, your characteristics, your abilities, and apply for that one. It may be right where you are now. It could be a little step lower. Even if it's one step lower, your skills, traits, and characteristics and abilities will get you promoted faster because you're excelling in a role that's just a little bit below you. You're excelling, you'll blow it out, you'll jump two, two steps up. So. Mm hmm I'll show you how to do that. We're getting ready to go through those here in just a moment. All right. Um, next slide, please. All right. So here's what we're going to talk about. There's four ways we're going to pr we prepare this. So the first one I'm going to give you is uh, a general store analogy. So you guys know the, the general story. Like you've seen the old westerns. And, you know, everybody rides up on the horses, they time to the hitching post, and they walk into the general store. So your interview process is kind of like a general store. So I'm going to give you an analogy on that here in just a moment. The second thing, um, just like you asked just a while ago, Sister Mac, I'm going to show you how to develop your accomplishment 
history. This allows you to go through, if you've been on the job five months, if you've been on the job 50 years, I'll show you how to go through and develop your accomplishment history that will show you how to get the next job. Whether you've been out of the workforce and about to go back, same steps apply. Doesn't matter if where you are in your career. Background research, okay, what, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I find all this information? I'll show you how to do that. And then the last part is preparation. So that's what we're going to go through uh, for the next 30, 45 minutes is the general stir analogy. Once I describe it to you, you'll exactly know what I'm talking about when I say general stir analogy. Develop your accomplishment history. We'll go through exactly what those detail. Um, third is background research. And fourth is preparation. So. Almost every word I'm saying right now, I have it in a script. So I'm going to give you my script that I'm talking from right after this. So if you miss something, I've got it written down in a script. So that was some feedback I got from the last class. I gave you a lot of information, couldn't write fast enough. So everything I have, I'm saying right now is written down in a script. So I'm going to give you the transcript of this. All right. Next slide, please. <laughs> All right. So this is a general story. You've seen this in the westerns on Gunsmoke and Bonanza. They ride up, they hitch their horse in, and they go in. So it's kind of corny, but it works. So think about an old western or a TV show or a movie you watch. Somebody walked to the general store. So there, there's a guy uh, or him and his wife in an apron behind the counter, husband and wife team. Um, so somebody comes in and says, hey, I want a little of this and a little of that, and a little something else. So clerk goes back there, opens the cabinet, gets some licorice, uh, gets some bullets. Uh, he needs some flour. He gets that. What else you need? I uh, need some pickles. You get that. We need a bag of peanuts. You get that. We need some nails. You get that. So you go in, and all these cubbies are back there. So they turn around, and they just start pulling stuff out the cubbies. That's what a general store is. So. They get licorice, lots of different stuff is all in that general store. This is what you're doing in your interview. Everything you've done is your general store. So when they ask a question, you got to know which cubby hole to go pull it out of. So everything about your job and everything to get you to the next job is in your general store. You just got to know where to go pull, where to go look. You want some licorice? Oh, that's over here. You need a box of nails? That's over here. You need a bag of peanuts? Oh, look on the middle shelf, third one on the left. You go pull it, you go get it. How you prepare for an interview is exactly like walking into a general store. Every question that they ask, you go look in your cubby hole and you pull it out. So what we're going to do today, we're going to find out what's in your cubby hole. Because you have it. You absolutely have it. You just don't know where it is. <laughs> like it. It's all dusty. It's like, oh, I forgot I did that. That's in the cubby hole. I did that 20 years ago. That's in your cubby hole. I'll show you how to dig in your cubby hole and find everything you need. So, because it's like this. The question area I'm going to ask is, are you a good rep? Are you a good leader? They're not going to ask you that. They're going to ask you questions. A good representative. So let's say you're a customer service. Are you a good customer service rep? What's everybody going to say? Yes. Everybody going to say that. Till they get the job. So <laughs> what you want? Yeah, that, that ain't what I hire. So, so yeah, they're going to ask you, are you a customer? They, they don't ask, are you a good leader? What they're going to do, they're going to ask questions to find out the behaviors that you have that tells me you're a good leader. So you can say you are, but then I'm going to start asking questions. And there's a certain way that they ask questions where if I ask them enough, you can't hide and you can't fool us. I'll show you how they ask those questions. I'll give you examples of the questions that they ask. Because if I ask enough of them, you can't make it up. You absolutely can't. But if you know where to go in your cubby hole, 
You can ask the same question 12 times. I'm going to go right back to the same cubbyhole. It's the same answer. No matter how you ask the question, keep going to the same cubbyhole. It's the exact same one. So, yeah. So, they're going to ask the question, not are you a good leader, but are you a good customer service rep? They're going to ask questions to dig in your background uh, that gives them the data to show them that you are exactly who you are. So, the recruiter is looking for four things. You're going to get tired of hearing me say it, but it's the same thing. Skills, traits, characteristics, and abilities. S-T-C-A. That's all we're looking for. If you can sell those to me, that increases your chance of getting the job. Real simple. All right. Um, so here's the questions that they ask, how we ask questions. We ask what's called behavioral questions. So most of them sound like, tell me about a time when blank. So I'm looking for what behavior did you do? So tell me about a time when, you, let's say you're a customer service rep. Um, you're working at Dillard's and you're supposed to be the cashier or whatever. Here's a question I'll ask you. Tell me about a time when you had a disgruntled customer on the other side who wanted to return something but didn't have a receipt. And our policy says you have to have a receipt. Tell me what you did. That's a behavior. Now, there's no standard answer, but you have to tell me what you did. I'm looking for a behavior. What do you do when this happens? Okay. Yeah, we got people online can't see you. Go ahead. Calm the client down first. Okay. And then say, um, how can I help you? Okay. And then I'll let them know, you know, when they speak to me and say, you know, what they need. Then I would say, well, let me, the policy states that we have to have a receipt. I am so sorry that you don't have a receipt. But we can return the item with a gift card or you can exchange it for a different size. Okay. Uh, now, how can I help you? Which one of them would help you? And normally that will calm them down. Perfect. 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 So she's giving me specific examples of behaviors that she does. Number one, I heard, I'm going to calm them down first. That's a behavior. The second is she said, I'm going to explain to them the policy. So for me, as a hiring person, that's good. Okay. Number one, she's going to calm them down. So it ain't going to be irate. Right. She ain't going to draw attention. Everybody going to be looking over there like, what's going on over there? Second, she's going to cover my bases as the manager because she's going to go through our policy. So if anything happens, I'm covered. So she's giving me specific behaviors that she's going to do. Those are repeatable behaviors. So when I get a disgruntled employee I know, or a disgruntled customer, I know exactly what you're going to do. That's the behaviors that we're looking for. When they start, well, um, here's kind of what I do. I already know. She's making this up. <laughs> I already know they're making it up. But go ahead. You have to stay calm yourself mm -hmm. in order to calm the customer. Because if you're talking loud and disrespectful to them, then that raises their Absolutely. attitude. You know what Absolutely. I'm so you have to learn how to keep an even tone yourself and stay respectful to that person, even though they're going to be upset with you. Mm -hmm. So as long as you know how to uh, relate, as your, even your own self, think about how the things that you go through, because you got to go through that same thing in mm -hmm. your life before. Mm -hmm. So how you felt when you went up there and said, can I return this, but I don't have my receipt? Well, sir, I apologize, or ma'am, I apologize, but we're not allowed to do that. But here's what we can do. Absolutely. You know, and Off try an to calm them down like that. Good deal, good deal. So the best way for me to find out is I don't ask about what you're going to do in the future. They're going to ask about what have you done in the past because that's going to show up again and again and again. Now, sometimes there's some stuff in our past that we haven't learned yet. It's like, I don't know how to do that. I ain't never faced that. That's a growth opportunity. When you get a question like that in an interview where you haven't had it or don't know it, say it. I don't know that. I have never had that happen to me. But when you try and fluff it, they're going to ask a behavior-based question. Tell me about a time when that happened. 
Now you got to make up something because they're going to dig for behaviors. The best way for me to find out if you can do the job today is to dig through your past to see what you've done before because those exact same behaviors are going to show up. Yes. If you said that you have not done it, will the employee, would they hold that against you? Because you said, you told the truth. You never experienced that. Mm -hmm. So will that be held against you? Because you never. I'll, I'll tell you in my experience, I've never held it against somebody when they absolutely told me the truth, that they've never done it and they don't know how to do it. Okay. Because for me, that helps me myself. Okay, this is an opportunity. I can help you grow. I can help you get a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That's a learning opportunity. I was just curious that would they would that company held that against you? But some some of them do. Some they? do. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, they haven't done this and they haven't they done, done that. Right. They haven't done this and they haven't even been here long enough. Or right. yeah, there's a lot of things that they can do. But when you start looking for behaviors mm -hmm. and the behaviors match up, all of that goes out of the way. All of that. So all right. Next slide, Brother Roy. All right. So Developing your accomplishment history. All right, so here's how we get into this. Here's how we fill up our cubby holes. So any question they ask, I go to my general store, I can pull it out, and I can answer your question. Here's how we do this. So you have your resume. So what you do is you grab your resume, and um, you know all of your jobs that you've had, and you're going to start at the bottom of your resume. I mean, the job you had 30 years ago or 10 years ago, whatever it may be, you're going to remember that job, but then just kind of write down stuff that you did, that you wrote about it, that you can remember. I remember doing this on that job. I remember doing this on that job. I remember doing this. However many jobs you have, think about each job for 30 minutes. That's all you're going to think is spend 30 minutes on each job. And that 30 minutes, you may have... 20 bullet points, you may have two. Because I did that job so long ago. So you start with your resume. If you have a job description of what you're doing now or the job description of what you did back then, grab it. It'll help remind you of these things. If you have a performance review or annual review or anything like that that you can remember, jot that down too. You're going to spend 30 minutes on each job. Next thing you're going to do is look, look for any accomplishments you had in that job. Say, hey, I remember I did this. Oh, I remember I got this award. I remember they nominated me for this. Just kind of jot that stuff down. It doesn't have to be real extensive stuff, but what you're looking for is quantity, a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't have to be about the quality. Just get the quantity of stuff. And on your resume, it's most likely the stuff that's in bullet points if you have a resume. If you don't have a resume, just jot it down. Write it on a piece of paper. Because remember, your resume is all up here. When you go to interviews, just print it on paper, but you know it all. So step one, you start with your resume. If you have a job description, fantastic, use that. If you have performance reviews and reviews, use that. Uh, performance reports. Grab those as well, too. So there's a difference between annual reviews is what you get at the end of the year. Performance reports are kind of like monthly or quarterly or however it may be. So those are two separate things. Spend 30 minutes, look for any accomplishments that you have, most likely the bullet points, and then you want, quali you want quantity, not quality. All right. Next slide. So here is, I'm going to get to you just a moment. Here is the best way to do that. These are your friends. Get you a bunch of these, the three by five index cards. They're less than $2. Get a ton of these, a ton of these little cards. They will be your best friend. This is how you prepare for your interviews. So I'm going to show you what goes on these cards. So if you want to be the most successful interviewee that they have, it's going to take a little work but you will absolutely be the best prepared person. Your nerves gonna go away. You ain't gonna be anxious. You won't be nervous. You won't be sweaty because you'll have it all. You know exactly what you wanna do. All right, so the best thing that you can do is get these three by five cards. 
Get you a pen, uh, pencil, you can erase, scratch out, whatever. We're going to use the front and the back. So I'm going to show you what goes on each card. Next slide, please. All right. So what goes on the card? On the side that has the lines, remember all the jobs I told you you go back and you look through? Each accomplishment, write it on the card. So each accomplishment goes on the front. So here's what an accomplishment may look like. I was number one in my class. Let's say you had a training class you went through. You had the highest score on a test or whatever. Um, I delivered blank on time. My reports are never late. Uh, I delivered on budget. I reduced something by 9%. And if you can put a number to it, we absolutely love numbers. Because a number equates something into my brain. It's like, oh, mm, we could use a 2% reduction in that. Because it's all about getting more efficient with the amount of people that you have. Or how do we produce more with the number of people that we have? So if you can put a number to it, absolutely put a number to it. It, look, it, it, it There's something about a number that tells us, Ooh, I like that. Because I can always use that. So that's what goes on the front of your card uh, that has the lines on it. So you'll, you'll start at your oldest position on your resume and then just write it on here. Then you move to the next position on your resume. Same thing, write every accomplishment down about that job. You move to your third job. It could be at the same company, but you had different titles. At every title, write down what you did. Any accomplishments you have there. So, then, next slide please. Step two, after you have your lines filled, you're going to flip this card over. On the back side is blank. So you're going to ask yourself now, out of all the accomplishments you wrote on the front, what, you see STCA, what skills, traits, characteristic, or ability does this prove about me? So all my accomplishments, what does this say I'm good at? That's what you want to know. Does what I wrote in here show I'm a good leader? Does it show I'm good at project management? Does it show I'm good at building relationships? Does it show I'm good at networking? Does it show I'm good at being a team player? Everything that you can think of that the side that you really like, that that tells you what you are, write that on the back. So you could have three accomplishments here, but nine things written on the back that it tells about you. It tells me she's smart. It tells me she thinks outside the box. It tells me that she'll take a chance on something. It tells me that she learns a lot. It tells me she's a fast learner. It tells me all of those things. That's what that one little bullet point right there, or those three bullet points, that's your cubbyhole. When you ask a question about leadership, there's your answer. Oh, question. Yes. Is that taking chances? Like mm -hmm. you say, um, taking chances. Mm -hmm. You know, some supervisors are not willing mm -hmm. to allow you to go to take chances with certain um, projects that they asking you to do. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of them want you to stay in that. Stay in that little lane. lane. Yeah. yeah. So do you think that would be a problem? Or is it maybe it's the position that you're applying for that you may can go outside of the box? Because I did it while I worked at DHS a lot because mm -hmm. I was over a lot of programs. Um, actually, it helped me. There like it is saying, right there. Yep. Because uh, I was before I was uh, Forming the duty, so I know which to do. You know what to do, when to do it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some people, some supervisors don't like you to do that because my supervisor, even though I did it and it made everything better, yes, um, she got kind of irritated with me. Gotcha. So, so would that be a good one? <laughs> that, that actually is a good one. <laughs> is it? Because w when you deliver that in an interview, that looks really good on you. But guess who it looks bad on? The person who tried to hamper you down, tried to tamper, tried to put out your fire. 
It's like, oh, I like this person. Because not only did she see a problem, she stepped outside the lines. She got it done, and it was done better than if she would have stayed inside the lines. So when you take a chance like that, absolutely. Absolutely. Because that tells me, number one, that you're always thinking. You're trying to make it better. And when you run into a hurdle or a roadblock, we're not just going to sit there. We're going to find a way to go left. We're going to go right. It's kind of like getting into a car wreck. There's four ways you can avoid a car wreck. Turn left, turn right, speed up, slow down. That's all you can do <laughs> to avoid it. <laughs> and I'm, I've got uh, similar uh, situations just mm -hmm. like uh, Reed. Because um, even though I've been on my job for 30 years, every every position I've been in, I've always been the one that um, kind of like the team leader person. Uh -huh. I always go above and beyond what I'm asked to do. And... Um, like the job I'm in now, it was like a whole hum job. Everybody was always sad, and I went there and I started trying to celebrate the little birthdays and increase morale. I, mm -hmm, I would put uh, little signs on their door when it's their birthday and let them celebrate it for the whole month and maybe give them something for the whole little things for the whole month. Mm -hmm. And so then when we got the new supervisor, she was like, mm -mm, "We don't need to do that anymore." So then everybody's morale went just back down right again. Down. Yeah. And then when I was in the first position at, at, when I started Mary Mahoney, I was there two weeks. The first week I went there, the lady that hired me in the week department went on vacation. I was there by myself to run the whole department. And we had like 50 people that would come to one appointment. Mm -hmm. And so I was so stressed out that I almost quit, but I didn't. And I made it work. There you go. So. Now, that's the story in your cubby hole. If I ask you, tell me about a time where things didn't go your way, that's a cubby hole. Oh, I know what it is. Pull that out. Let me give you this story. That's in your cubby hole. That answers the question of, tell me about a time when something didn't go right. Tell me about a time when you were frustrated on your job and what did you do? That's what I'm looking for behavior. You just, get, you just answered that question. So that's two questions right there. You just answered in that one thing. Yeah. So that's another one. Tell me about a time when you were uncomfortable and had to learn something you never did before. There you go. That's three questions. You got one answer for all three questions. So you got all your accomplishments on the front. You wrote down on the back, okay, what do these accomplishments say about me? What does this say about Charlene? What does this say about Chandra? You write all that on the back. Then what you do, as many bullet points as you have back here, let's say I've got five bullet points, you make five copies of this card. Because those answers can answer five questions in any category that they want. You gotta answer for it on the other side. So, your oldest job may have two bullet points on it, but it could have four or five different things on here. Your current job could have nine or 10 accomplishments on there and six or seven on the back so whatever is on the whatever's on the back where you wrote what it says about you if it says leadership you have a stack for leadership if it says time management you have a stack for time management and this card goes in there so are we so are we like we taking the cards with us to the interview or we no, just this is what you're practicing yeah you're studying your cards oh, okay yeah this is your practice deck this is how you get really, really good at interviewing. Because there's four categories on the back. He can ask a question on any of these four. It doesn't matter how we ask it. The answer's right there. Exactly the same. The exact same. So, so when you use that general store approach, what's the question? Okay, let me look in my cubby hole. There it is. Got an answer for you. That's how an interview is. Just think of it as a store. Go in there. You want licorice? I got licorice. You want peanuts? I got peanuts. You want pickles? I got pickles. If you don't have it, I don't have that in my store. <laughs> I have never done that. That's an opportunity for me to learn. I haven't done that before. Or I've never been faced with that situation. Good stuff right there happens when you get prepared. So you can find a whole list of accomplishments from everything on your cards whether it's presentation, whether it's administrative skills, all those things, 
Whatever the lines say about you, write it on the back. You'll take that card, make so many different stacks of it. You should make stacks of it. Now you got an answer for each and every one of those. So the next thing in this is your uh, background research. So your background research is about the job you're interviewing for. So you want to learn about the job that you're interviewing for. Not the company, not the pay, not the market. You want to know about the job. So how do I find background research on the job? Number one, ask people doing the job. Ask somebody who's doing it now. Ask somebody who's done it before. So, hey, you had this job back in the day. How did you do it? Or what did you do? What was expected of you? How did they know you were doing a good job? How did they measure you? What's the toughest part about that job? If you could change something about that job, what would you change? Or if you could have gotten better, at that job, what would have made you better? So you ask all these questions. Now you're fully prepared when you walk into the interview for the job. You know what it's like. You've heard from somebody who's done it. You know what to avoid. You know what will excel in the role. There are so many other things you want to learn about the job, not the pay, because you should know the pay before you get there. The market. You kind of got an idea, otherwise you wouldn't be applying for the job. And everything else, you should start making up. But the bulk of your time should be spent learning about the job, asking people who did it, ask people who are doing it now, ask the person who used to supervise somebody in this department, um, ask somebody in another company that does something similar. So you want to do all your background research on that. Those will be the accomplishments that you bring forward um, to let them know you have everything that they're looking for. That's your background research, and that's your notes on your cards. Because remember, I'm trying to close my eyes and picture you doing that job. That's what the person on the other side of that table is doing. If I can close my eyes and I can see Sandra doing the job, yeah, that's the one I want. I'll be close. Ask some question. Let me think about my cubby hole. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Well, he said licorice. Where my licorice at? So. <laughs> How do you find yes. out? Uh, you know, some companies won't tell you what your pay is. How do you find that out? Because some of them they'll keep that a secret until you're there. Uh -huh. And that's weird when they say you got any questions. You be wanting to say, well, how much do you start out at? You want to ask that, but that's. That's, I think that's a no-no, you're not supposed to ask that. You, you, you absolutely can. There, there is no illegal question you can ask. There are zero illegal questions you can ask the employer about a job. Now, they can't discriminate you based on your answer, but you can ask any question you want. You can absolutely ask. Now, on the other side, as the interviewee, as I'm interviewing you, there's, there is no illegal question I, I can't ask you, but there are some questions if I ask could get me in trouble but it's not illegal. For instance, let's say you say, hey, I'm, I'm a young lady. I'm getting ready to start a family. I could say, okay, when y'all going to have kids? Because then you're going to be on maternity leave for X amount of time, X amount of day. That's not an illegal question. But she could, if she don't get the job, she could say, he discriminated against me because I told him I was going to have a baby. But it's not illegal for me to ask that question. But it puts me in hot water. That yeah, is. <laughs> Don't ask that. So. <laughs> Correct. Correct. But if you don't get the job, yeah. If you if I don't hire you, you will come back and say he didn't hire me because I was pregnant and he knew I was going to go on maternity. That's why he didn't hire me. But I can ask the question. It's not illegal for me to ask it. But. If you don't get the job, it puts me in hot water. Now I got to defend that. So there aren't any illegal questions that, that they can ask. They can ask anything they want. You as the interviewee, you can ask whatever you want. You can ask it all. So, yes.
when I used to apply for jobs, I, what I did was I looked at the description of the job, mm -hmm. what your duties are. Absolutely. And then what I did, I just took each one, and then I did like research. Absolutely. On that, so I put that in my head. Yes. And so when I got to the interview, then um, now some I didn't know, but I did say I hadn't had that experience. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to learn it. To learn it. Good deal. Yeah, so I did do that, but I always, when something I applied for, I did do research on it first, so I won't be so, you know, because you're already nervous mm -hmm. when you're coming in there. So I want to look and see the main detail of that job, you know, what's the, you know, the main, I guess you say the main need of it. Yep, yep. Um, so that's how I did apply for my job, so I wouldn't come in there empty-handed and lost. There you go. Because yes. that's when you start stumbling. Yes, yes. <laughs> and when you start stuttering, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to ask another question. Right. Because so, <laughs> yeah. I want to see what, if that's the truth or is she making this up. But, yeah. So what she did was exactly the right thing. She went to the job description, focused on the job. What skills do I have? What traits do I have? What characteristics do I have? What abilities do I have? That's what you're selling in an interview. You're selling all that to let me know. You're the best person for the job. You're the best person for the job. You're the best person for the job. I said this at the beginning. An interview, it's a sales job. You're trying to sell me to hire you. Most people don't like sales. That's what an interview is. I need to buy you instead of buy that one. That's exactly what an interview is. All right. So when you go through these, you'll have a stack of 50,000 cards. You have so many of them because of the numbers that you put on the back. What you want to do is whittle it down to like five or seven little scenarios, five or seven cubby holes that you know like the back of your hand. Those five or seven, you can talk for an hour and a half on like five little topics. Because it's all right here in your little cubby holes in your cards. I'll walk you through what we mean by these cards here in a moment. So, preparation. All right, now, I got my cards ready. I went through my resume. I wrote down everything I did at AT&T back in 74. Wrote that down. <laughs> then I moved on over to, we got bought out by Lucent or whatever. So when I was in this role, wrote down what I did there. This is what it says about me. So I managed a team of nine. That shows I'm a good leader, right? Leadership on the back. All my reports were on time. Administrative work, I'm real good at that put administrative on the back. Anything that this says about you, what it means, put it on the back. You can have nine different cards, 10 different cards. Remember, you're only gonna spend 30 minutes on each job. That's all you're gonna spend, 30 minutes. Write as much as you can in 30 minutes. After that, got your cards, whittle it down to about the strongest five or seven in an example. So if you ask me an example about leadership, you got nine cars that say leadership on it. Which one of them says the strongest thing about you with leadership? That's the one you want to use. That's one of my five bullets. What's the next one that shows that I know how to solve a problem? Or I'm faced with something that I didn't know how to do it, but I worked through it. Which one of these examples in my cubby hole is the strongest one about that? Boom, pick that one. That's two bullets. Do the same thing. Which one says I'm really, really good at communicating with people? Out of all the times I've done, which one of these accomplishments go on the back say communication? Oh, yeah, I remember I did that. That's a real good one. Use that one. It's three bullets. You just keep loading your gun. You get five or seven of them that are the strongest, and that's what you ride with in your interview process. So now, no matter what question he got, I got five bullets, I got seven bullets loaded. Aim, shoot, boom, I got an answer for you. What's the next one? Boom. Now, your nerves are gone because he can ask any question. You got five or seven that you've practiced, that you know. So how do I practice this stuff? How do I get good at answering interview questions? How do I do? Because I hate doing interviews. They nervous. I be sweaty. Ooh, my stomach be hurting. Oh, I don't know, but I got to go to this interview. It could be 10 minutes, but it seemed like I was in there 10 hours. How do I get all that to go away? Easy. You practice it. You practice it in the mirror. 
Yeah, you practice it before you go to work. So here's what you do. You take your stack of cards, all the stuff you wrote on the front, your accomplishment, write out a question. What would he ask me where I can get his answers? Write that question out. Then you practice it. So you can say, okay, if he asked me, tell me about a time when things didn't go my way. Look at my card. I got it. It's in my five or seven. So they, here, they do ask that. Absolutely. I've had that question asked me before. Yeah. So, so here's what you do. You're going to practice this, and this is going to be able to roll out just like that. I'm going to show you how you practice it. Two ways you practice it. Number one is audio. Second one is video. First one is audio. Everybody got a phone. Everybody can record stuff on your phone. Get your phone. Look at that card. Ask yourself, okay, today is Monday. Uh, what's today? The ninth? Monday, May 9th. All right, it is 8 o'clock. Then you, you're just going to practice with yourself. So, Reggie, tell me about a time when things didn't go your way. Then you're just going to answer it. And when you answer it, stop it. Don't listen to it. Ask another question. Reggie, tell me about a time when blah, 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 blah. Then you give your answer. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. Ask another question. Um, you've been in this situation, you have a customer who is disgruntled and they want to return something but don't have a receipt. Tell me what you did. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. Don't listen to it. If you do it in the morning, listen to it at night. Because if you listen to it right, you're like, oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I like that. You listen to it at night, you're going to be like, what was I saying? That's exactly what's going to happen. It's like, mm, I didn't like the way I sound on that. Yeah. You know how you, you speak and then you, somebody play it back and that was you, ooh, is that me? Yeah, that's you. Yeah, you don't like the way you sound when you talk. <laughs> so that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, those same questions you ask yourself in the morning, you ask, and then you listen to it at night. You can record it again that night. Don't listen to it. Get up in the morning, listen to it. Mm, that sounds better than the first one. If you do that every day, by the end of the week, you listen to how you answered the first time on Monday, and then you ask yourself the same question on Friday, you're going to have a completely different answer. Nine times out of ten, your answer is going to be a lot longer. It's going to be more thorough. You won't stutter. There won't be no ums and uh. There won't be in there. The more you do it, and you're just practicing with yourself, the more that you do that, it'll be so easy for you. That's how I practice. That's how I get good at it. My wife is like, why do you like interviewing? I say, it's a lot of fun. She's like, yeah, it's just, you're weird. I was like, <laughs> but it, it, it is. It, it's, once you become prepared at it, interviewing is easy. It is a lot of fun. Because honestly, who's in control in the interview? Uh-uh. You are. The interviewee is the one that's in control. Yeah. So if you told me, say, hey, I want you to do something, Reggie. And like, like if, if you're interviewing, like if I'm interviewing you, well, let me take this back. Let's say you're interviewing me. Okay? All right? So if you say, Reggie, stand up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand up. Because, okay, she got something for me. You ain't in control. I've had people, all right, stand up now. You go stand over there. You can stand over here. Okay. This is how I manage. I do it this way. You see, I have two of y'all over here and one over here. My goal is to figure out how to get that one person to play with everybody else. So let's say y'all two don't like each other and you're over here. You're the best person on the team. They okay. They're by the middle of the pack. But they don't like this person over here. How do I get the person over here to move over here? And all I did was just separate the same people that I was, they was interviewing me. I got them involved. Okay, you can stand over here. They get up and they do whatever. You as the interviewee, you have the power in that interview. Don't ever give that away. We give it away sometimes as soon as we walk in and we sit down and they say, hey, how are you today? We give all our power away. We think they run the entire interview. No, you run the entire interview. 
Because they had a person tell me this. If you get up and walk out, who are they going to interview? Nobody. You have the power. A lot of times we give it away because I want your job, so I do whatever you say just to give me the job. Sometimes we've taken jobs that weren't the right job for us. Absolutely not. And what happened? We gave our power away at the interview because we wanted it so bad I would do whatever just to get that job. But you have the power in the interview. It's not them sitting on the other side with the job. It is you. If you ask them to do something, they will absolutely do it. If I say stand up, they're going to stand up. If I say you three move over here, you two move over here, them three going to move over there, them two go over there. They will do exactly what you say. You hold the power in the interview. Don't ever forget that. All right, so how do we do it? Audio. Remember your phone? Practice recording yourself all the time. Second thing that you want to do, do it via video. So get your phone, set it up on the sink or wherever it may be, just so the camera's facing you so you can see yourself. And you're going to record yourself. So for this, you can use your spouse, you can use one of your kids, you can use whatever. I don't care what you got on. But you're going to get your chair, act like you're sitting down in a chair. And all they're all they going to do is just read a question. And you're going to answer it. They're going to put it down. They're going to read the next question. Put that down. They're going to read the next question. Put that down. Stop. Don't look at it. Wait till the next day. Or wait. If you do it in the morning, wait till that night. Go back and look at yourself. What do I do <laughs> when they're asking me questions? Do my shoulders slump? Do I cock my head sideways? Or... And my arms folded, or do I do this, or what do I do? Because then you get to see what they see. What does my voice sound like? Do I sound like this the whole time they're asking questions? Does my voice go up and down? Does it look like I'm excited? Does it look like I'm enthusiastic about the job? Does it look like I'm having fun? Watch yourself. Because what you do in that video is exactly what you're going to do in the interview. That's the exact same thing. So here, here's what I get when I interview people. We'll be asking questions, and they just sit there, just kind of laid back and chill and whatever, answering the question. But then when I get to the end, oh, they got this great clothes now. Oh, that's, let me tell you, I'm your best person. I was like, where was that when I was asking questions earlier? You just sat there like this the whole time, answer my question. Yep, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and go on. But when it's time for me to give it to you, not all the excitement comes in like, that ain't what I want. I want the same person all the way through. Whether it's a good day, whether it's a bad day, I got the same person. Yes? Can you be too overconfident that you can look at that in a negative sense? Oh, say it one more time. I said, is overconfidence a negative thing? Or, you know, when people are overconfident, mm -hmm. like, is that a bad thing? I mean, as far as you getting the job or being a prime candidate for the it's, job? It's actually how you show it because sometimes you are overqualified and it just comes out. Okay. Sometimes, because you could take a job like, ooh, I got this role, but I could see her doing something different, doing something better. So what does cockiness in an interview look like? What, if I'm the, inter if I'm the interviewer and you're interviewing, I'm saying, ooh, she's a little cocky, she's, ooh. Sometimes that's good. Depends on the job you're going for. So you want to know the, the image that I'm portraying now, does that fit in the role in the job? For sales, that's absolutely perfect. Why? Because I know I got somebody out there. They're going to give them an objection. They're going to, they're going to keep going. They will not cower down. They're going to try and find a way to get it. But if I'm working at a funeral home, I need somebody soft. I need somebody quiet. I don't need an overly confident person. Or if I'm working with someone who's on the phone with people, I need to have a calming demeanor. I don't need him to be aggressive and everything, because what they're going to do, plunk, hang up on the other end, and we done lost it. That customer is now leaving Allstate and going over to Geico now. <laughs> because you got out rate with them, and you got noisy on the phone, and they just hung up. So it depends on the demeanor that you have is what that job is for. Me, I like confident people, because I'd rather have somebody I can turn down than somebody I need to turn up. 
Somebody like, listen, come on, give me more. But if I can turn it down and direct it in the right way, that's absolutely perfect. So when I do see overconfidence, what do I do? Ask more questions. I'm going to ask another behavior question. And when you can answer those behavior-based questions, just boom, 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 you got it. How you get good at answering questions? Practice on the audio, practice on the video. So it's going to take a lot of work, but you will be amazed. If you do it on Monday and you watch yourself on Wednesday and you play back Monday's video versus Wednesday's video, it's going to be 10,000 times better. And all you did was spend like 40 seconds ask, answering the question. Recorded it, I listened to it, don't, listen, don't play it back right then, play it back later on. That simple, that easy. So audio and video are the easiest things for you to do. All right, um, cover audio, cover video. All right, last thing, these three by five cards, put them to work for you. Again. How do I use this three by five card? Grab your resume. Through every job you've had, you're going to take 30 minutes per job. If you got a different title, take 30 minutes per title. Write down everything you remember you did in that job. Put that on the front of the card that has the lines. After you've gone through every job, let's say you got 10 jobs. All right? It's going to take you no more than five hours. You ain't got to do all 10 at one time. But if you got 10 jobs, it's going to be five hours. First job, 30 minutes. Write down everything I remember. Oh, I did that. I got this award. I got promoted for this. Blah, 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 blah. Jot that on the front. Go through every job. On the back side, look at what you wrote on the front. It says, okay, what does this say about me? What skills, traits, characteristics, and abilities does this say about me? This says I'm a good leader, right? Leadership on the back. This says I got good presentation skills, presentation on the back. This says I'm good at customer service, customer service on the back. If you've got three bullet points on the back, make three copies of this card. This is your general story. If I had something for leadership, ah, right there, boom, pull it down. Answers right here. If I had something about communication, same card. If I ask something about customer resolution, same card. Doesn't matter. You're going to ask me three different questions. They're coming from the exact same card. You could ask me 50 million questions. It's going to come just from the same cards. Doesn't matter. It's the same card. And that's all I got in my general store. Turn around, look at the cubby hole, pull it down, boom, answer it. Put these three by five cards to work. Put them in a little rubber band. Or put them in a paper clip. Ask myself the question, there's my answer. Record it verbally, walk into the bathroom, whatever, while you're cooking, turn it on. Put your card up there. So, Sister Greer, tell us about yourself. Boom, you tell yourself about yourself. Stop, boop. Next question. Tell me about a time you had a significant, this is the most important question you'll get in an interview. I forgot to mention, this is the most important. Tell me about a significant accomplishment you've had. That is the most important question. That is the absolute toughest question. Is that in life or on another job? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So you tell something about your your most significant accomplishment. That's it. So I've tell you some answers I've gotten in um, when I've asked that question. But let me start with one that I said, okay, tell me about the most difficult time you've had in your career or in life. This was the answer I got. A lady said, it was my first divorce. She said, I'll tell you, that hurt me to the core. And then she walked me through how it all came about. What she was telling me was behaviors, what she did, how it affected her kids what she did with her kids. So this is telling me, when she gets a roadblock, what does she do? How does she go around it? She's like, we were a two income home, now we're one income. I still got the same amount of bills. So how do I manage to pay for all of this stuff, which is one income versus before we had two? What do I do now? So she said that was the most difficult thing for her, was going through that. It had nothing to do with the job. 
but it had a behavior, it had a skill, it had traits, it had characteristics, it had abilities. That's going to show up in work, it's going to show up in home. How she processed stuff was fantastic. She told me, so now, here's where I am now. My kids are all in school. I've got them off to college now. I've got the last one here. And she said, my toughest part was seeing my first marriage break up. Ask another question. What's the most significant accomplishment you've ever had? Toughest question you'll ever get asked in an interview. Most people shy away from it because they don't want to brag on themselves. That's the question for you to brag on yourself. What's your most, tell me the most significant accomplishment you've had in your career or in life. What are you going to tell me? Whatever it is, it's going to have skills. It's going to have traits. It's going to have characteristics. It's going to have behaviors. That's all we're looking for is behaviors. Every question we ask is around behaviors. Because if I ask enough behavior questions, you can't fool me. You absolutely cannot fool me. So let's, let's me and you role play. All right? I'm going to ask a question. So, Sister Greer, tell me how long you've been playing. Uh, how long have you been a musician? I've been a musician for, I'll have to add it up or subtract okay. it. <laughs> just, just toss out a number. Since I was 13. Okay. So, how did you know? that being a musician was for you? Because my Okay, mom. stop right there. What am I gonna ask her for? A skill, a trait, a characteristic, or an ability? And all I asked her was, how did you know it was for you? I'm listening for that. Okay. How did I know it was how for me? How did you know musicianship was for you? Um, when I got to the third grade in music. What happened in the third grade? I realized now I'm looking for a behavior. What happened? You gotta tell me what happened. What's it, the behavior? It became a little easier to me. Define easier. Um, I was able to, my coordination got a lot better, and I was able to read the notes a little more clearer. Okay. It became easy, just like riding a bicycle. Okay. Once I got started, it became easier. Good deal. All right, so now, what did that tell me? First, she didn't know how to do it. How did it get easier? Coordination. Practice. Those are behaviors. That's all we're looking for in the interview. Or she could have said, well, you know, I just liked it. That don't tell me nothing. I got good at it. How'd you get good at it? What did you do? How did you do it? That's all we're looking for. Skills, traits, characteristic, characteristics, and abilities. I'll tell you what answers those most. If you can answer a question in a story form, Make a story out of it. Like she just said, I remember, oh, now I'm going to remember. She started, she got good in the third grade. That's when it started turning on for her. So before then, she struggled. At the third grade, that's kind of where things started to open up for her. I'll never forget that about you now. <laughs> that's how you remain memorable. If you put your answers in a story form, people will remember stories over anything else. I'll leave you all with this. So there was a picture that um, a guy paid $650 for. Him and his wife went over to the Bahamas. There's this island called uh, Pig K Island. And this photograph was nothing but a pig swimming in the water. Pigs don't usually swim in water. They never do. But he has this picture of a pig swimming in the water. So he and his wife walk up, he's like, that's a strange picture. What, what are you doing with a, a, a pig in the water? So the guy that was selling the picture told him this. He said, well, over here, there is this island that's called Pig K Island. So here's how it became Pig K Island. Here in the Bahamas, we don't have a lot of places for pigs. So this land was free. So a farmer took some pigs over there and left them over there for the forge and stuff because it was free. It didn't cost them anything. So at night, you know, we're on the water. All the restaurants have to pay a fee for dumping all the food that nobody is called refuse. How we get rid of the refuse, they have to pay for it. So some of them started just dumping it in the ocean. And as the current moved in, all the food would wash up to this shore. 
And over here where the pigs were, after so long, they ate up everything. So what happened was as the refuse from the restaurant started floating over, these pigs learned how to swim to go out and get the food. So they would go out and get the food and go back to the island. So the more that they did this, you know, pigs breed every pig learned how to swim. So they boated over there, and what happened was he saw this pig swimming out to get food. He stuck his camera in the water and just took a picture of it. So he was like, you know what? I'm buying that picture. And he bought that picture, not because it's a pig in the water, but because he could tell the story of how the pig got in the water. And so when people come over to his house, he absolutely, he loves when they ask about that because he tells them a story. It wasn't a picture, it's the story that, he, that people remember. So when you can answer questions in an interview in a story form, I will always remember you. I will always remember it. So, general story analogy. We learn now how to go through our resume, how to get stuff out of our cubby holes, how to answer all the questions. We learn how to develop your accomplishment history with your note cards. We learn how to do the background research. What do I do when I'm looking at this job? The number one mistake most people do is gather more information on the what? Company. Company. When they should be gathering information on the job. Absolutely. Learn as much as you can about the job. The last thing, uh, preparation. Two ways we prepare. Audio and video. Use your phone. If you're doing audio, record yourself in the morning. Ask yourself a question. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. Next question. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. Don't listen to it. Go through the rest of the day, whatever that, before you go to bed, listen to what you said that morning. Play it back. You'll be like, ooh, I don't like that. That did not sound right. Practice again that night. Same question. Wake up in the morning, now listen to it. Sounds a little bit better. Same question. Do that Monday. By Wednesday or Thursday, you're going to have it down. Absolutely have it down. That's practice. That's practice. So when you get an interview, you're going to ask a question. Oh, I got this now. Easy. Video record yourself. Have your spouse or somebody else. They're not going to critique you because they don't know the answer to the question. Just have them read the question. Put your camera over here. Have them stand behind the camera. Push record. They're going to ask you a question. And you watch yourself. What do I do when they ask this question? How are my hands? Listen to what you sound like. Watch what your face does. I didn't know this, but when people ask me a question, my wife said, I do this a lot. I don't know that. She was like, you look stupid. Like, what am I doing? I just end up doing this. <laughs> I never knew that. I never knew that. To ask her, and I just end up doing this. So now I got to be conscious. Don't tilt your head. I'll kick your head straight up. <laughs> so, <laughs> because it looked like I'm like, what are you talking about? It looks like I'm lost. But I'm actually leaning because I want to know more, but this looks like I'm lost. Like, straighten your head up. I was like, I never knew that. Yeah. I never knew that until I recorded my seminar. And I was like, I end up doing this. <laughs> so, but there's a lot of things that you would do because those show up in an interview. Mm -hmm. The person on the other side sees that. You never know what you look like until you record yourself. <laughs> record yourself in the morning. Watch yourself at night. Like, ooh, I didn't know I did that. Or I look up a lot. Or when I look up, I say a lot of, ums and uh that means I'm thinking on process slow yourself down if they ask a question you don't have to answer right away I love when they when I ask a question and they sit for a little bit that lets me know they're thinking because my whole deal as an interview is I want to make you think because I want to see what behavior you got what's in you gonna come out that's what Reverend say when you squeeze it it's gonna come out it's the exact same thing in your interviews. So, general store, fill up all your cubby holes, develop your accomplishment history, use your note cards, do your background research, and prepare. Audio, video, listen to yourself. That's how all your nerves go away in an interview question. 
These cars, are, they can ask 30,000 questions. You're going to go to the same car to answer whatever question they have for them. So we've gone just about an hour and 13 minutes. I appreciate y'all for coming out tonight. Those of you that are online, uh, if you have a question, uh, be sure and contact me or type it in into the chat in Facebook, and I will be sure and respond because um, I will follow the feed, but I'll also give you my email address for those of you who want to email me questions. Uh, my email address is my first name dot last, so it's Reginald, R-E-G-I-N-A-L-D, dot Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S, at live, L-I-V-E, dot com. Um, if you email me there, the fastest way to get to me is actually by text. And my phone number to text me at is 918-325-0274. If you text me your question, most likely I'll respond back within the next couple hours because I'm either on the phone <laughs> or I have my phone handy or I'm in a conference call. But my goal is to return uh, your text or your questions within the next 24 hours. If I don't get you back to me, hit me up again. So. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, Y'all have a wonderful evening, and God bless you all. Thank you.